Hello and welcome to Nickrit. My name is Cody Lee and in today's video we're going to be doing a bit of an addendum, an added version of my bee pattern. Uh, and what I mean by that is I've already done this tutorial before but I was not as good at changing my stripes nor did I add a little stinger. That was actually a request um, in one of my comments and honestly yeah it does make the bee a little bit cuter. I think it's super adorable so I'm going to show how to make this. How I also do the wings a little bit differently. I like these a little bit better. Uh, different yarn options that you have. I used this really cute rainbow yarn. I also adjusted this so that you could make a giant velvet bee. Instead of using this hook, which I use, I ended up using a size I hook and the Bernay plush yarn. You can easily adjust this pattern, but it will be, as you can tell, a significantly larger bee. Also, I have not been posting for a hot minute because I sliced my finger right open when I was cutting onions and it's pretty healed, but it's still pretty garish looking. So I'm just going to keep a bandaid on it for now until it is completely healed. Now that that rant is over, let's go ahead and go over what you will need for this project. Also, there will be a kit to go along with this. And because I did this so long ago, there was not a left hand component for this video. So for this tutorial, you'll have a both a left and right hand component. If you are not on the right handedness for you, go down in the description down below and you can find your handedness there. I link them down below. And I'm making little kits to go along with these tutorials. So I'm gonna post some pictures right here. Basically I put them on my Etsy. And if you purchase one, if you want to, no pressure, but if you're interested, you can go on my Etsy and find a cute little bee kit. It will have everything that you will need to make this amigurumi and uh, it will come right to your doorstep. So I've been doing that with a bunch of my new tutorials lately. I'm going to be hopefully by the end of this video having the bee and my turtle up on my Etsy as well as the whale and the strawberry whale that I already have on there. So let's go ahead and get started with what you will need. All right, so it's a little fuzzy, but for this project, I used all Hobby Lobby. I love this cotton. It is a size four worsted weight yarn, and I love it. It is so nice, and it's 100% cotton. I would recommend using a cotton yarn. It is fairly nice. This is in the black for the stripes, as well as the, this is a really new one that they hold. It's called gold, 14 gold. You can also use their curry color. And this one is like a rainbow color. I'm not remembering the name of it. I'll post it right here as soon as I can remember what the name of it is. But it's also very nice and gives you this kind of rainbow aesthetic with this bumblebee. You will also need some yarn in white. You will also need a 3.25 millimeter crochet hook. I am using a furls crochet hook. This is an ergonomic one that I really love. They do sponsor and help out the channel. So if you're interested in one of those, you can get links for that down in the description down below. You will also need some fluff. I bought this. It's like this cotton polyester fill blend that they have at Hobby Lobby and I really like that a lot too. You will also need a darning needle and for this I'm using a 12 millimeter eye. It's a safety eye just to use on that. For the bigger bee I'm using a 20 millimeter eye if you're following along and just using the Bernay uh, plush yarn. All right let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for this, I've got fluff everywhere from that Bernay plushy velvet yarn. I love that yarn, but it likes to just shed everywhere on the tail, so that takes a minute for it to go away. So if you keep seeing little spots of like black, yellow, and white, that's why. Basically, we're going to take our yellow yarn and we're going to start by going from the front and we're going to crochet back to the back. That's how we're gonna start this. I've already posted the pattern and the chart. And on the chart, you may have noticed that I do something a little funny. Um, I do something called staggering my increases instead of stacking them. You can stack them just fine. Essentially, we are adding six stitches every single round until we get to 30. So if you're more comfortable with stacking them, you are absolutely fine to stack them. I just like how it looks when you stagger them. And I have a video called Stacked Versus Staggering, which I will link down below in a nice little beginner's playlist if you're interested in that. 
It's kind of more of an intermediate thing that a lot of people will do, but I put it in the beginner's playlist because a lot of people are interested. But I will show you as I go along what that does. So I'm gonna create my magic ring. If you wanna create your magic ring the normal way, you can. I just can't do that because I'm very dyslexic and my brain just doesn't function like that. Um, I just chain one and then chain two and I treat, I skip the first chain and go into the second chain from my hook. And there, I'm gonna start and treat that as a magic ring. So we're gonna put six single crochet on the inside of that and try not to bounce my camera. So three, going back inside that, that's your chain right here. And then this is your single crochet that you're going into. Four, that's your chain that you're going into the second one. Five, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now don't worry, that's a giant gaping hole, but what I do is I just kind of pull the tail and it pulls it all together. And another thing that you can do if you find that your hole's not closing is you can actually take your tail and work it through the stitches of your second round. So that was round one, and now we're on the second round. And our goal is to add six stitches evenly across our stitches for until we get to 30 stitches essentially. So what I'm gonna do here is because we have six stitches, I'm going to have to increase every single stitch. And I'm going to take my tail and hold it into the middle of that stitch. That way it kind of just works together. I also work through front loop only. You have two loops here, one, two, and I work through the front one, the one closest to your hook only when I work with my amigurumi. It's not crucial with this pattern, but I like how it looks and how much more bubbly it looks. You might also notice that I work by yarning under versus yarning over. I do an X stitch versus a Y stitch. Um, you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. Again, do what's comfortable for you. I'm keeping my tail as if it is a piece of my work right there and putting two stitches inside that single stitch from the previous round. And I'm gonna do that the entire way around with my tail towards the front. I think this looks a lot nicer. About halfway through, I always like to kind of tug the tail a little bit and then just keep going. That way the tail doesn't end up kind of bunched up inside the stitches. It looks kind of funny that way. I have not been keeping track, but I think I have two more increases. I'll count at the end. There we go. Put an increase in that one. So we're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. That means I have one more increase to do to get me to twelve. So one and two. Now I'm going to use this tail as a stitch marker as I always do. If you want to use a normal stitch marker, that is absolutely fine. Our kits come with a stitch marker for that very reason. Um, but I like to just use my tail because it's so easy. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve stitches now on the front of my face. You can see where it kind of overlays like so. And we're essentially going to go from 12 stitches up to 18 because we're increasing six stitches every single round. I'm going to hold my tail to the back, bounce my camera for good luck as always. We're going to work through the front loop only, not through both loops. We're going to single, oh, we're not going to split our yarn. We're going to single crochet one. And then in the next stitch, we're going to increase by putting two stitches inside the single stitch from the previous round. Same as we did originally. So one, increase, one, increase, one, Oop, don't drop your stitch, and increase, one, and increase one and that is our final increase we should now have 18 stitches at the end of row three we are now on row four but first I'm going to take my tail and I'm going to move it through that final increase right through the center just to keep track of where I am and I can keep track a little bit better here. So here is where I'm going to stagger my next round. Round four is a staggering row. And what this does is it keeps my increases from all stacking on top of each other, which makes it so that the increases are a bit more minimized. You can't tell where the increases are and there's not that hexagonal 
shape that happens when you stack them on top of each other. When you have the, whenever you increase, you inherently have a larger hole on your stitch and because they're all stacked on top of each other, it creates that hexagon. So by staggering them versus stacking them, you end up minimizing how apparent that is. I also think that it looks just generally more round rather than hexagonal, which you will inherently get when you are doing increases of six because a hexagon is a six-sided shape, basically. I hope that makes sense when it comes to shape making and I balance my camera for good luck. All right, so now to stagger that, we're originally we would just single crochet one, single crochet two, and then increase, but that would line up right here. So for me, what I like to do is I'll single crochet one, increase the next stitch and then single crochet one that way our increases don't line up with one another they're off centered but you're still increasing the same amount because you're essentially just splitting the two in half so single crochet one increase single crochet one and you can see here that you still have two stitches between both of your increases right there. And it looks really nice. So we're going to continue that until the end of row four. So one, increase. Oh, don't split. Increase. Wow, that just really wants to split. Really wants to split, buddy. Increase. There we are. We got past it. single crochet one, single crochet one, increase, single crochet one, one, increase, one, and the last one is one, increase one we're going to take our tail move it forward we are now on round five and this is actually we have 24 stitches on our work and we only are going up to 30 so we're going to do our final increase round which is just single crocheting three so one two three and then on that fourth stitch we're going to increase which gets us from 24 stitches to 30 stitches so one two three four and then increase so increase right there one two three and increase. Continue this all the way to your stitch marker. So four more times. All right, so now we have all the increases that we're going to have. Here, I'm going to actually, for the next three rounds, just single crochet around, and then I'll show you how I transfer over into making some mostly seamless stripes. I'm always not the best of it, but this is the best I've been able to do in my life, so I'm going to show you how I ended up making it look like this. It looks better on the subsequent ones than these ones, so I'll show you how I do that in just a moment as soon as I get these three across done we'll come back add eyes and i'll show you how i do my striping be right back all right so now we've gone for those three rounds and what we're going to do now is for the next two rounds we're going to work in black after that we're going to work two rounds in yellow and then after that another two rounds in black to create the stripe however how i change my stripes is something that i would like to show real quick so here is how I get it to be as seamless as I can. We are a stitch before the end of row, the, the third row. We're gonna go inside and we're going to slip stitch 
with our main color, our yellow, and you're gonna have one on the hook here. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take our black yarn, let it fall over the desk, you know, as you do. We're gonna pick it up. I like to leave a decently long tail so that I can like tie things off with it later. And we're gonna grab it and wrap it and then slip stitch. Now don't worry, this is gonna seem like it would create a really like not straight line. I'll show you how this creates a straight line afterwards. But what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go inside that same stitch, that, excuse me, that next stitch, my bad, and we're going to do a single crochet, and we're going to single crochet all the way around until you get back to this stitch. Be right back. All right, so now we're getting back to the beginning, and here you can see there's a bump, but don't worry, there's there's a fix to it. So we're gonna go over here and single crochet. We're gonna make sure that we're maintaining our 30 stitches. So I'm skipping this little piece right here because watch what happens after I skip it. So we're gonna go here and single crochet into there. And you'll see that that's not as seamless as you'd like. Take your yellow yarn and pull it. Same thing with your black yarn. And when you tug on it, it creates this almost seamless, it's as seamless as I've been able to get it, a uh, little edge here. We're gonna go around for the rest of this round and then I'll show you basically how I do it on the next round for when I transfer to the yellow, but then I'm just gonna do the next black round on its own. And I think I'm also gonna show you how to do the eyes before we leave. First, I also like to take my tails right here and I like to just give them a little double knot just to tie them off make them so that they're secure I always like to secure these knots even though they're just going to be kind of sitting on the inside of the amigurumi with some rough play it can get kind of messy but that is pretty much as seamless as you're going to get it at least as I'm going to get it if you have a better method please let me know I am always looking for better methods to make a seamless stripe in my amigurumi let's go ahead and finish this round and I'll show you how we change over to our yellow All right, so we have this stitch, and then there's one more stitch before the end. But here, where I have the meat, is where I like to do my slip stitch. It it works better, just trust me. It looks a little bit more seamless. We're gonna again slip stitch. We're gonna drop our black yarn. We're gonna go grab our yellow, slip stitch up, gonna let that go to the back, and then single crochet into the stitch right after that slip stitch stitch. I hope that that was not saying stitch too many times that made it confusing. And then we're just going to keep single crocheting around essentially and around and around and around. Two rounds with this yellow and then two more rounds of the black and then I'll come back after uh, and show you how I do after that stripe. Essentially we're working on this stripe right now. You go around twice and then you do the black for two rounds and then I'll show you how we finish off here. Then we'll go to the stinger and then we'll do the wings. I also want to show you the eyes real quick. So I'm going to go grab the eyes and be right back and show you how to add those. This is the point where I like to add them because it's nice and not too far along. All right, so here we're going to add the eyes and this is the point where I like to add them. What I like to do first is, you know how I put my tail through the last increase on the um, final increase round? We're gonna take that tail out and I'm just gonna use my little spots here as a stitch marker. I might actually just move my tail forward over here. There we go. And what I like to do is that's the bottom. I like to keep my stripes or what my stripes would be along the bottom of the bee so it's just not as apparent. So what I like to do is take that, hold it as if it's the bottom, and then I kind of look around and I try to find my increases. There's the final increase, a long row, um, one, two, three, four, five. So we're gonna take this right here, and because we have an increase right there, that's still gonna be centered, we're gonna take it and put it on the inside of that increase. This one I will add the back to, the other one I won't immediately, but this one I like to add the eye on right there. And then we're gonna follow along that row, skip that increase, skip that increase, and go into 
this increase. There we go. So we skip two increases along the center of that row and then we go into that. That way it's kind of horizontal. I hope that makes sense. It's all along rows five to six because it's kind of in the middle area. Now I'm looking at it. That's the bottom. I'm pretty happy with it. You could add it up one more and it'll still look fine. Do what you want to do for adding eyes, but I'm going to add the back to it like so. And we're going to resume are going around. We're going to finish off this. I'm going to go finish up this row and show you how I again change over to this color. So for here, I'm on the stitch right before where my stripe would end. I just bounced my camera for good luck. We're going to single crochet into that stitch, skip and go into the first stitch of the yellow. And it's pretty on par, pretty even, but we're gonna take our black and we're gonna just kind of tug it a little bit. And that brings things together and makes it fairly seamless. Honestly, I think that is one of the most seamless methods I've ever tried. So again, we're just gonna go around for two rounds of the yellow. Um, so this is our second round now of the yellow and we're gonna do two more rounds of the black and then I'll show you how we do the butt. Be right back. Okay, so we just slip stitched off our little stripe there for the black, the final one. We have two black stripes. We're gonna take our yellow, pull that through that slip stitch, go into the next stitch after our slip stitch, and start single crocheting around. We're gonna single crochet around for the entire round, just this one round. And then we're gonna start doing decreases. Be right back as soon as I get to the beginning of this stitch again. There we go, we're gonna tug our black tail, pull that in, and now for our decrease rounds, we're essentially going to be doing the inverse of what we did for our increasing over here. We're gonna be going from 30 down to six, and the way that we do that is essentially we're gonna kind of mimic what we did on this round and then keep going back down. So for that, we, on our last increase round, did a single crochet three, increase so now we're going to do a single crochet three one two three and we're going to decrease and the way that i decrease is i do an invisible decrease i have an entire tutorial on how i do my invisible decrease but essentially i put my hook through the first stitch that i want to decrease these are the two stitches that i would like to decrease and then i take my hook and i kind of whip it and go into the next stitch. So now both of those two stitches that I would like to decrease are on the same hook here. We're then gonna treat it as if it is one stitch and just single crochet those two together. Now we go into the stitch after and do one, two, three, decrease. And we're gonna do that all the way around. One, two, three all right so we just finished our final decrease it kind of laps right there but that's that's where the row begins what i like to do here also is to find a pair of my scissors some of them and cut the black yarn at this point i kind of leave a nice long one and i just let it go on the inside of the body let it kind of just hang out there. It's fine. I'm also going to pull up my loop right there and move along my tail wherever it decided it wanted to go. There's my tail. I can do this. There we go. That shouldn't have been as hard as it was. So now what we're going to do for our next decreasing round is we're going to grab our loop. And again, we're going to do the inverse of what we did in order to get to the, we're at 24 stitches now. We went from 30 down to 24. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 3, 4. So now we're going to do the inverse of how we got to 18 stitches last time around. And what we did was we single crocheted one increase single crochet one so now we're going to single crochet one decrease single crochet one one because we we staggered it decrease single crochet one and i find that if i stagger my decreases as well it looks a lot better and you don't notice it as much either one especially with that invisible decrease decrease 
one all the way to the end. So here, I'm at the point where I would like to start stuffing. I'm also going to move along my tail real quick just to make sure that I know where it's going. It does tend to kind of trail towards the right and that is absolutely fine. But real quick, I'm going to go stuff as best as I can and I'll be right back. I do tend to try to put a little bit of stuff in between the eyes for my little bee. That's like the first step that I do and then I just kind of stuff the rest of it until it's what I want it to look like. Be right back when I'm done stuffing it. Okay, so now I have stuffed and we are going to be adding some stuffing as we go and we're going to finish up our last two rounds of decreasing essentially. We're going to be going from these 18 stitches this round down to 12 and then from those 12 down to 6 in the round after that. And the way that we get from 18 down to 12 is we're going to single crochet one. Oh, that went all the way through. Eee, there we go. And then take the next stitch and decrease it all the way around. One, decrease. One, and decrease. At this point, I don't really use my tail as much. I kind of just take it and pull it and put it back into my amigurumi. I know that I need to decrease every single stitch in order to get it down to the six that I want for my final little bit there. So I don't really need a stitch marker at that point. I kind of just count. Um, I'm going to stuff this just a little bit more just to make it so that it's as stuffed as I would like it to be. It's got this little, it's just basically like my little final stand when it comes to stuffing this little guy because it's all I'm going to have left. Oh, try not to actually stuff your active stitches that's not good and try to keep it so that the stuffing goes underneath the stitches because otherwise you'll end up crocheting into some stitches there there we go let's get some more stuff because i feel like i'm gonna need a bunch more we're gonna do one last little piece and this piece i always like to kind of ball it in my hand just a little bit kind of smooths it out we're gonna go right here and then I'm gonna try to also like push it underneath the stitches like I said earlier and that way I'm not gonna be adding some fluff into my stitches essentially I am mostly happy with that so now on our very last round we're going to decrease every single stitch so let's go ahead and that is a repeat of six times so decrease one we do it a little bit differently on the very last decrease though so two i do anyway you can do it just decreasing it three but i like to do it a little bit differently four five decrease and now we have one two three four five six seven stitches we have one final decrease and what we're going to do here is we're going to skip the stitch right next to our hook and go into the next one that way we're still getting down i'm trying not to get the stuffing into our hook we're going to slip stitch off leave a decently long tail so that i can then pull that through Try not to get the stuffing as much as we can. We're going to take our tail and grab a darning needle. Not let the bee bop around everywhere. Now here, we have six open stitches. How do we fix this? The way that we fix it is we go inside of each of our remaining six stitches and go from the front towards the middle of that stitch, just on the top loop again, and go all the way around four five and then finally six but here I'm gonna take this and instead of going anywhere else I'm gonna go back inside and through the side with my darning needle that way when I go like this and tug it all it all kind of swoops up into a piece and that's why you don't want to get stuffing into your stitches because yeah, it's going to take a little bit of that, maybe. Maybe that'll do it. I'll knock over stuff first. 
And then we're going to kind of tuck that in. There we go. That is all done. I'm actually going to take this. I'm going to weave it through another section as well. I like to be a little thorough when it comes to that. So we're going to weave it through like up there. The farther you get your tail away from where it was originally, the better off. Because A, if you have messes ups in the future, that's a term, <laughs> you can have a longer tail on the inside to fix said issue or and it's just generally less likely to unwind. So there is our base little bumblebee body and now we're gonna work on the bumblebee butt little stinger all right so now we have our little base body done and we're going to work on our stinger so for our stinger we're gonna grab our black yarn and we're going to again slip knot create another magical ring on our nice little crochet hook here we're gonna chain one chain two skip the second chain and go into the very first just like we did earlier and now we're going to single crochet four on the inside of it before we did six to get that that's more of a round shape we want more of a triangular shape so we're going to do four single crochet inside of our first stitch here this is a little bit more difficult and a lot of times you'll find that your work kind of tries to flip in on itself but you just need to kind of force it to not that was row one, and now on row two, we're going to increase to six stitches. And how we do that is we're going to single crochet, starting in the round, one, and then increase, one, and then increase, splitting those up. So one, go into the next stitch, and increase. You don't realize how hard crocheting can be when you are sans one finger. It's not great. Then go into the next stitch. I think I may have split that. Did I split that? No, I didn't. Oh, okay. It just was like unusually thin there. All right, one, and then the last stitch. I'm trying not to go through both stitches because that will make it a bit easier for you in the long run on this part too. And then increase the next stitch right there. So now you should have six stitches on your work, but you'll notice it is flipping in on itself. It's not as apparent with the black yarn, but here we're just going to kind of move it and try to get it so that all the stitches are going the right side outward, essentially. So we are now on round three, and we're going to essentially do the exact same thing as soon as we get this fluff out of our yarn. There we go. So, but instead of doing it just two times, like we did on row two, on row three, we're going to do it three times to get us from six up to nine. And that is going to be it for our increases for the stinger. So one, get the polyfill out of our yarn. Why? Why are you one with the yarn now? Come on. There we go. So we just single crocheted one, go into the next ow, stitch and increase. single crochet one and increase and then single crochet one and final increase one two here i like to take my tail and i'm going to use this as a stitch marker just like i did earlier but for here, it's not really going to be necessary for super duper, super duper long. So now we're going to go on to row four, and essentially we're just going to single crochet around all of those nine stitches that we just increased up to. So one, two, three, four, five, six seven, eight, oh, come on, eight, eight, and nine. So our tail's just gonna kind of hang out there for a minute. We're gonna then not lose our stitch and go into the next stitch of what would be row five, and we're just gonna slip stitch off on that and essentially sew it onto the butt of your 
little guy there. Let's get some scissors, knock everything off my desk. I leave a nice long tail for sewing, move that and pull it through that slip knot, slip stitch essentially right there. We're gonna take our tail and kind of pull it out. And I like to kind of just kind of snip right there, not too short, but not too long either. And I kind of just squish it on the inside and we're going to sew that on to the butt of our bee. Be right back. I also don't uh, put any stuffing in my tail, but that's a personal preference. So if you want any kind of stuffing on the inside of your stinger, that is a you call. And that piece of polyfill is still very much wanting to be a piece of that. Oh, whoa, well, it's a lot longer than I thought. That's why I couldn't get it. All right, be right back. All right, so our bee butt is done, and now we are gonna work on the wings. I've created one, and essentially all we're doing is making an increase of six, up to 12, up to 18, but I am gonna show how I do that. It is the same as the start for our bee face, so six, 12, 18, and then we slip stitch off essentially, but I am gonna show what that looks like because I do a couple of things a little bit differently. So we're gonna put this onto our crochet hook, Again, make our chain two, so one, two, go into, skip the second and go into the first, put our six single crochet on the inside, one, two, three, four, five, six, pull that tight so that it is not just everywhere. And here's where I do things just a tad bit differently. Instead of working through the front loop only, I'm gonna work through both just for this one because I don't want my back to have any kind of ridges or anything that looks weird. And then I'm also going to take my tail and move it as if it is a piece of my work and I'm gonna work my tail in through the stitches like so. I kind of just put them right in the middle of those stitches and then I'm going to do my increases like I would uh, like I did previous essentially So now I'm going to increase that stitch one two The next stitch is the third and the fourth of row two three four There we go keep going with the yarn still in front five six or the third increase essentially. I'm gonna take my tail and lightly tug it. Don't tug it so hard that you end up warping your yarn, but if you tug it a little bit, it can make it so it doesn't look like it's, the tail's super fat and inside your um, stitches essentially. If you just tug it ever so lightly, every once in a while, it'll look a little bit better. That was seven, eight, nine. So this is the fifth stitch, nine, 10. And then the final one, 11 and 12. So now I have 12 stitches. That was the end of row two. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Pull our tail to the back, but continue to work through the front loop only. And here for row three, we're going to single crochet one and then increase. We're going from 12 up to 18. One, two, one, increase, one, two, one, two, so increase those, one, two, One, two, and this should be our final decrease, and this should be our final increase, so one, and, oop, there we go, two, and after that, I have my last increase, so we have 18 stitches. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. Beautiful. We're going to skip what would be the first stitch of round uh, 4, essentially, and we're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. Skip, slip stitch. Makes it look nice and neat, essentially. I'm going to then take 
this leave a decently long tail i don't need one that long there we go just just you know decently long pull that through kind of tug it a little bit but we're going to take our back tail because we worked those through those stitches we don't need this tail anymore we can just kind of snip it and it'll wiggle its way as best it can we're going to pull that up we're also probably i already snipped the tail of this one so it doesn't super duper matter but you are going to want two so i've already made my pre one before and what we're going to do now is we're going to sew them along here and I am going to show you how I do the first one and the second one. I basically, in my last video, I ended up sewing these together and then attaching them, but I actually think I really like how it looks when they're separate. Um, I tried it once and honestly, I think it looks better. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one. Let's get on camera, there we go. We're gonna take it and kind of line up with the eye over here, go over and up, and I'm gonna kind of like stab them in the center right there go through the work from the front bounce to the camera for good luck go from the front to the back snag go from the back into the middle of that stitch i go through the front loop only when it comes to that go through i only do it for across like three stitches or so so it's pretty quick now i'm gonna try to split that there we go try not to hit the camera again there we go. Go through the front, through the back. And then go through. I go across that stripe, essentially. So we're going to go through here. And then through the front and into the back again. Kind of tug it every time you finish. That way the, the yarn doesn't show through. Turn your work. Go over here. Grab and go through on the other side, on the underside, grab the other side of the stitch, so this is the back of the stitch, I hope you can see that, and it goes through like so, and then we'll go one more, right here, oh come on little buddy, there we are, and grab, and then I like to kind of tuck it through that where I started over here, do, 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 do. Tug, tug, tug. That way, it looks pretty darn good in my opinion. We're gonna then take our yarn, snip, work that into our little guy there, and we're gonna repeat with the other one. So this is the other wing. We're gonna grab him and do the same thing where it's kind of centered, but go over and then up here, and we're gonna grab the wings here. I try to get it so that it is between two and three stitches apart. I think this looks good. Oop, drop our darning needle, make nice clingy noises. Go through here towards the back that time. Then go in the middle. We're always going kind of towards the back as we go. Grab our middle stitch here, but from the front into the center. And then through this right here, and go through that right there, turn our work, tug as we go, there we go, and then kind of grab on the other side as well, all three stitches, so essentially you're going through six stitches, but I think this looks nice, and try to get it as close as you can to the wing because that looks a lot better. If you have it going too far, then your uh, string will show, essentially. So we're going to go through here. And uh, basically, whatever you need to do to get it stuck on is what you need to do. Go through the center. Go through wherever you want to on his little face. Pull it nice and tight. And uh, cut it, essentially. So that is your B. So there you have it. That's essentially all you need to create this cute little updated version of my bee. Again, there is a printable PDF for this down below, free for the first week for those that would like to go grab it down below. So make sure to subscribe if you want to be in the know whenever I do post more videos because I usually do put the pattern that is printable on Ravelry 
for free for the very first week for people that click on it in the first week. And if you're subscribed, then you're going to be the first person in the know. Um, you can upgrade it into a little plush bee. I will say that you're probably going to want to work through both your loops when you're working with plush yarn, though. I find that it works a lot better. And I do end up stuffing the tail when I do the plush one. If you would like me to do a video on plush yarn and how to basically turn any of your emigurumi into a plush yarn version let me know i'm thinking i might do that i'm also going to do a couple other videos that are really interesting and hopefully you'll be interested when i post them like how to make money with yarn i think that would be a lot of fun um again you can make a little rainbow one i actually just got some other rainbow yarn that i'm going to try it with so if you want to go over to our Insta and see that, I do tend to post things over there or on the Discord. I know that I'm not the best on Insta or TikTok, but I am very vocal over on my Discord server. And there's a lot of fun over there. And we have, I think, 140 people on there now. It's a, it's a bunch of people, honestly. And we all talk and talk about yarn and it's a lot of fun. So uh, get the kit if you are interested in getting any of my little kits. You can get the rainbow version as well. I'm in love with how these turned out. It's super cute and I love how the wings are a little bit different. And I like how things kind of, you can see where, at least I can see whenever I do any of my YouTube videos, where I've grown as an amigurumi artist and that's a lot of fun. And I'm probably going to do more updates on things that I've done before that I now know a lot of better ways to do. So if that's something that you're interested in, please do hit the like and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. Um, I have a Patreon, so if you'd like to go on our Patreon and support the channel, you can go on patreon.com slash knit and you can see the different rewards that we have for our patrons there. Free patterns, early access to tutorials, stuff like that. Thank Thanks again for watching and be sure to like, subscribe, hit the little bell before you leave if you want to see more videos like this. Alright, until next time guys, bye!